Hey, it's Irreverent Aegis here, and welcome to another installment of the two-man vet dungeon tanking series, where my heterosexual life partner Kyle and I two-man every single vet dungeon so that I can show you all the tanking mechanics you're expected to know and all the extra things you might be responsible for if you stupidly queue up for a random vet dungeon solo style. With two people in the group, we are simulating a bad pug experience so that you can better learn all the mechanics that good groups just burn right past. Our first boss is Kovan Girion. Clearly, if you listen to his voice, is just the reincarnation of High Kinlord Relis out of Banish Cells. Let's go over the moves that you need to pay attention to in this fight. First is the strike from above, which you're going to see right here. They'll teleport into the air, target somebody, and strike. About 8 to 10 seconds later, the shade that appears above him, which you can see right on the top of the screen, falls down to the same location and strikes again. The next move, which you're currently seeing, are these lingering rectangle AoEs. The boss flashes to the outside of the room and will send out a rectangular AoE that goes across the entire room. He then flashes to the other end of the room and sends out a second AoE that's parallel to the location of the first one. The AoE lingers for 4 seconds after the attack lands. Don't stand or walk through these, they kill you really quickly. After sending out the attack, Kovan will leave behind a shade in this location as well, which can also send out rectangular AoEs throughout the fight. If you end up fairly far away from Kovan, an AoE will appear under his feet and he'll start running towards you to close the gap. This doesn't appear to occur if you stay close to him. If he does use it, a shade will appear where he started and it will do the same move a few seconds after the first one lands. At 70%, the boss will disappear, and the sound will get all wonky. A primitive Nyx Ox mini-boss will appear. This boss has two primary moves. The first one is a Conal AoE. You just need to face this away from the group, and it doesn't follow you, so it's pretty easy for people to get out of it. The second move is a Spinning AoE, where the boss throws a tantrum and sends AoEs in a circle around him. This can be interrupted, but I don't interrupt it here. AoEs get placed all over the map, but because this is telegraphed like a heavy attack, it's pretty easy to bash without a single one going out. Two types of adds, Nyx Hounds and Quama, appear during this phase. They can just be chained in and dealt with. The Quama do explode when near death or upon death, so be sure to look out for that. After the mini dies, the boss will return by doing his strike from the air move that leaves a shade to do it a second time. In addition, the shades on the outside will send out some rectangle AoEs. It is very important that as soon as he lands, you as the tank are ready to range taunt him. Because immediately after he lands, he'll do his teleport strike heavy attack, where he raises his blade over his shoulder with the point facing somebody in the group, then teleports across the room to strike them. As long as he's taunted, he'll attack you and not a group member. You can see I didn't get the taunt right away, leading to my teammate's death. Kovan's most dangerous move, especially on hard mode, are the poison circles. He'll bring his arm towards the center of his body, and then will raise his hand over his head. His hand will glow, and a poison AoE will appear underneath everyone in the group. The damage from this stacks, so don't overlap your circles. On regular vet, this can be self-healed through fairly easily. Around 60%, Kovan will repeat the lingering rectangle AoE move. Once again, he'll go to the edges of the room and send out these big rectangular AoEs. These two are going to be perpendicular to the original two, and once again, he'll leave a shade behind, so these can be sent out throughout the fight by the shades. Around 45%, the boss will leave another time and summon an Iron Atro mini-boss. There are two types of adds that appear during this phase. We have Flame Salamanders, which simply attack your team and can be chained in and taunted and Fire Shocks, which perform AoE attacks around where they're standing. As for the Atra himself, he sends out a Frontal Lava AoE, as you can see right here, and he has an interruptible Lava AoE that he channels. Just like the Nyx Ox, this puts a bunch of AoEs around the map and can be interrupted, and the third attack is that Heavy that puts a Lava Circle AoE on the ground as well. Your strategy for this boss, if you can call it that, is simply face him away from the group, as you normally do for bosses, and sidestep his circle AoE. After the Iron Atro goes down, the boss will return, in which case you should range taunt him again immediately, so that he doesn't heavy attack your unsuspecting DPS. You can see there, I was too slow again, but Kyle knew it was coming, because he's used to playing with me, 
and roll dodged it appropriately and didn't die this time around. The rest of this fight is rinse and repeat as Kovan will go through the same moves that I have already discussed earlier in the video. Around 20% he will go into a final shadow phase, however there will not be any boss. So he'll just come back after a set amount of time, in which case once again you should be on the lookout as the tank for him to drop so you can grab him right away to prevent somebody from dying to his heavy attack. Our second boss is Roxa the Warped, and the main ability we need to look out for from this boss is the Summon Dark Light Orbs. This attack happens very frequently. Roxa will throw her head into the air and send a light out from it, summoning orbs to the outsides of the arena. These orbs will tether to each player, and as soon as the tether appears, a 6 second countdown will appear on your buff and debuff bar. The orbs can be destroyed by any player by interrupting them with a bash, crushing shock, or another interrupt ability. Two players can get all the interrupts relatively easily by slotting crushing shock. Healers with good situational awareness, two functioning eyes, and crushing shock can actually get all the interrupts themselves from the center of the room if they also slot propelling shield on their bars. Propelling Shield is the morph of Siege Shield from the support skill line, and it extends the range of ranged abilities by 7 meters, allowing Crushing Shock to span the required distance to interrupt all the orbs. Next, let's talk about the three darkness phases where the boss stays. These occur at 85%, 70%, and 25%. The NPC will say something like, get to the light, and Roxa will jump across the room. Two light spheres appear, one by the NPC and one by Roxa. You take damage when you aren't in one of the light spheres, so you should get to one quickly. And as the tank, you should get up to Roxa ASAP, because when you're too far away, she will hit you with a fire throw attack. As soon as that phase ends, Roxa will do a spinning AoE, that's the same attack that the Nyx Ox miniboss does in the first fight, except this one can't be interrupted. At 70% and 40%, the boss will leave the arena entirely, and the NPC will summon a single light sphere for everybody to stand in. A big Nyxox and multiple larval Nyxoxen appear during this time. As the tank, you should taunt everything or chain taunt everything in. Once a certain number of these adds die, the phase will end. After this phase ends, whoever had aggro on Roxa will be targeted by the Nyxox on one of the outside ledges with a tether beam. The beam does damage, but not a ton. It's really just a big deal on hard mode. It will quickly damage and likely kill anybody who walks through it, however, so make sure to shame anybody who runs through it. You can also use it to kill adds if you want, which is pretty cool. That's pretty much it for all the mechanics that you need to be aware of as the tank. Remember, the darkness phase where the boss stays occur at 85%, 70%, and 25%. Always run directly up to the boss, Otherwise, if you're too far away, she'll hit you with that fire throw ability, where three beams of fire shoot at you and leave lingering AoEs. So, get up close and stay close. The darkness phases where the boss leaves occur at 70% and 40%, and that's when you need to pick up the big Nyxox, as that is really the only threat to your DPS during that time. Our final boss is Matriarch Vladi Telbani. And honestly, her moveset is pretty straightforward. Perhaps her most dangerous move is her Staff Slam, which is a multi-target AoE. She'll slam her staff into the ground, the animation looks like she's casting Wall of Elements, and an AoE circle will appear under each player. Don't stand in it or try to block it, especially on hard mode. Just roll dodge it. The next move I'm showing here catches DPS and healers off guard quite often. It's when she glides across the room, leaving behind these circles in her wake. This move's telegraphed, the boss will face a direction other than the tank, and an AoE circle will appear underneath her feet. You can call this out as the tank, as you'll be the most likely person to see it right away. One thing in particular for you to look out for as the tank is her ranged heavy attack, because it puts a heal check on you. It makes your health bar go white, and you can't heal normally until you heal through the white bar. Unlike many heal checks, however, you can self-heal out of this. You should roll dodge the heavy attack, though, that way you don't need to deal with it. Perhaps her most memorable attack is the Ipecac Challenge, the conal AoE that spews vomit all over the place. If you don't block this, you'll be locked out of using any abilities for several seconds, and you'll spew out your own vomit cone in whatever direction you're facing. Anybody who gets hit by your cone or the boss's cone will be forced to relive 
one of my favorite scenes from Family Guy. Perhaps the most memorable mechanic in this fight is Choking Pestilence, which occurs at 75% and 45%. The boss will move to the center of the room, go invulnerable, and put out an AoE that hits the entire arena. It will tick for damage every second and should be healed through. This lasts for a whopping 25 seconds. Interestingly enough, the damage you receive is based on a percentage of your max health, and that percentage increases every tick. During this mechanic, you'll also get four adds, Periites Blessed. They can pretty much just be chained in so they're taunted and die in the cleave. They aren't much of a threat on a regular vet. All they do is throw green mud balls. You may notice that a synergy appears on the map during this phase as well. This is a time stop and it actually freezes all of the adds in place. So once they're all grouped up, you can freeze all of them. That way they're even less of a threat. Make sure that nobody hits that synergy before they're all chained in though, as they will not be able to be chained once the synergies hit. After this phase ends, there's only one major difference in the mechanics. But first, a word from my sponsor. Hey viewers, ever had a moment where you just need a quick, guaranteed way to induce vomiting? Maybe after that dare you to eat a challenge that went wrong? Well, that's where Super Ipecac comes in. Trusted for centuries, now in a convenient single-use bottle. Super Ipecac, your reliable, time-tested buddy in those rare, really didn't see that coming emergencies. This is your secret weapon against mom's mystery casserole, or even, better yet, a get out of dating free card when you meet that Tinder date who totally catfished you. Super Ipecac, for genuine whoopsie daisy times only. Keep it real and stay safe out there, folks. Warning, while it's been historically used as an emetic, routine use of Ipecac is no longer recommended by most healthcare professionals. The American Association of Poison Control Centers, for example, has discouraged its use because it can lead to serious health problems like heart issues, seizures, and even respiratory failure. Besides, making someone vomit isn't generally an effective method of dealing with the poisoning. It doesn't remove enough of the harmful substance from the body, and it could cause even more harm. Always seek immediate professional medical advice if poisoning is suspected. If you must induce vomiting, there are much safer ways, such as using your finger or asking your well-endowed friend to shove his giant down your Super Ipecac. Five bottles for the price of one. Get yours today. Check the link below. And we're back. As I mentioned before the break, there's only one major difference after the first Pestilence phase ends, and that is the summoning of this green blob right here, Periad's Glory. You know a Periad's Glory is being summoned by the boss when she places a single AoE circle on the ground and then throws something on top of it. Periad's Glory will spawn in that location. As soon as you notice that one of these is being summoned, you as the tank should turn and range taunt this as soon as it comes out. Their attacks immobilize you and apply a debuff, and it's best that you take both of those effects. On hard mode, they can definitely one-shot your DPS and healer, so you might as well get into good practice of taunting them immediately now. Here you can see the second Choking Pestilence phase at 45%, and you can see me chaining in all of the Periods Blessed. You'll see that our DPS runs and hits the time stop synergy too soon, and I can no longer chain in that fourth parry edge bless. That's okay, because they're not that big of a deal on regular bet. But I would have preferred if he waited for my callout. Honestly, I probably just didn't make the callout, and he didn't do anything wrong. There is literally nothing new after that second choking pestilence phase, and there's no special execute phase either. So from here, it's rinse and repeat. We have the same moves from the boss, and we just burn her down to zero, ending the fight. I'll put the rest of this on 5 times speed, as there is nothing to see here. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a comment, hit the like button, or ring the bell to subscribe. And as always, stay chartreuse, my friends.